Well, Astros fans, you finally got what you want. Robel Garcia is no longer on the 25-man uh, roster or 26-man roster. And Dusty Baker finally made the move. He made he put Yuli Gurriel on the 10-day IL, but the Astros still got the loss. So he did everything you wanted him to do, but the Astros still lost this game. And we hate extra innings. Uh, we really, I can't wait till 2022 when this rule is not here. We're going to have a little short podcast and please, I want to hear your thoughts about what happened today in this game. And we'll talk about it now on this special edition of the lock on Astros podcast. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros and we... I hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Stros, and uh, you can find the show at Locked On Astros. We are on YouTube, and thank you for continuing to subscribe to us on YouTube. And we are um, over um, uh, twelve hundred on uh, subscribers on YouTube. So keep on uh, subscribing. And a lot of people in the chat are saying that Altuve bunting at the end of the game was dumb. Why bunt? Uh, Ty says why bunt or. or that was dumb. And Trey says, why bunt? Uh, so uh, what were what your thoughts about it? I thought that uh, the way that Altuve executed it was perfect. I thought that he just hit it a little bit too hard. If he maybe deadened the ball a little bit, maybe it didn't get to the third baseman so quickly. Maybe uh, he had more of a chance of reaching uh, first base. But credit to Jason Castro for uh, not giving up on that ball. And I don't understand what happened in that play for Jason Castro to be even safe on that play. Uh, but the whole situation shouldn't have happened. I hate the stupid extra inning rule. It seems like the Astros don't have those shutdown relievers to keep that man on second base. And I know um, it seems like every time there's somebody, that's why the Astros are now four and six on the season in extra innings, because it just seems like the Astros just don't have those shutdown relievers and Darth Vader, says that seriously Manfred should get rid of rid of the stupid extra inning rules. Um, yes, uh, I know the Astros aren't the only team that struggles that with that, but I believe that uh, they are dropping that after the season. Uh, I think they are dropping a few things after the season, but uh, that's it's still part of baseball, but it just sucks. It seems like every time the Astros um, get in that situation, they just don't have those shutdown relievers. And uh, speaking of which, shutdown relievers, look at what happened in the 7th, 8th, and ninth. We saw a preview of what can be the shutdown relievers. Stanek came in, Graveman came in, and Presley came in and did what they're supposed to do. Matan and then uh, Montero, they came in. Uh, they're they're Remember, they're not the uh, closers. Uh, they, they were the other guys. They were the guys that you're you're uh, hoping turn into something good. But um, I, I know Matan gave up that uh, that kind of. Uh, I think it was a ball to right field, and then that advanced a runner to third base, and then uh, th then the other guy scored. And uh, they're lucky to not allow another run. I believe there's a runner at third base, but they're able to get that third out before that guy scored. So uh, Montero was able to limit the damage a little bit as well. But uh, Zach Greinke was uh, a little bit better today. He was he was able to go six innings and he was able to bridge the gap to the the, the, uh, the back the bullpen. So that was a little bit good. So but yeah, this was a bad loss. I know Jerry said that this was a, p a pathetic loss. Um, I, I do agree with you. But uh, it, it's frustrating. It, three games in a row, you get that big uplifting, uplifting win against the Dodgers, and you're like, yeah, we can ride this, the momentum. And then all of a sudden, uh, you go on this three-game losing streak, and it's frustrating. And it, 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 it kind of takes you back to this whole, well, why can't we uh, play up uh, – 
why, why can't we play up uh, against the lower team, the teams that have the, the poor records? I mean, Ober, he was not a great pitcher, but uh, we couldn't get anything going. I know that uh, Taylor Jones, we'll talk about that in a second, uh, had his, a home run against him. And then we also had uh, Chaz McCormick get a home run against him. But uh, overall, the Astros couldn't, they could have done a lot more damage than they did. But the Astros had 13 strikeouts today against Twins pitching. That doesn't happen a lot. The Astros are at the bottom of the league in strikeouts and in terms of hitters, and they struck out 13 times. So that was very unlikely to see what happened. So uh, I know a lot of people are saying, why did Altuve bunt? I think he was trying to catch them, uh, catch them um, sleeping. I, I don't really know why he did that. I mean, I, I don't know. I, we'll have to see what Dusty Baker has to say about it after the game. I just think it was just a weird situation. Uh, like I said, I think that it was actually not a bad decision, uh, but I just think that he pushed it too hard and it just went right to the third baseman. And uh, it was just, it, it was not a bad idea but you got to deaden the ball. And somebody with the experience that Jose Altuve has, he knows how to deaden the ball a little bit more where it doesn't go so far. So, uh, But unfortunately, it, it, if Montero didn't give up that run in that situation, then we wouldn't be in that situation. But it just – it sucks. And it, it's uh, – yeah, it, it should have been basically infield uh, single. That's what Brett's saying. Uh, he's uh, driving home from the game. But – I'm not worried about this one loss. I'm not worried about the last three losses. The uh, the last game to the Dodgers, I'm not worried about the um, the the loss versus the uh, Twins on Thursday. That was because they got back home so late and um, they just they they weren't ready to play baseball. This game, you saw that they were a little bit more focused, but uh, for some reason. Um, Green key just gave up the other run and then the offense just went to sleep and they just couldn't score any more runs. And you're going to see that even with some of the best offenses in baseball, they're just going to kind of fall asleep. And um, I know that you saw Alvarez go three, four or five today, and then Brantley go two for five today. Al Altuve going one for six. I know that he could have been a little bit better if he would have um, uh, maybe hit the ball a little bit better. So, I guess uh, Brett's trying to join, so let's see what he has to say. Uh, let me change hey, what's the up, graphic. Barry? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, hey, uh, yeah, that was a crazy game. What's up? I'm uh, live walking walking from Minute Maid Park back to my truck. So I figured yes. I'd do a first-time live broadcast. Um, just jump on with you real quick. I definitely want to do this while I'm driving. Um. The Astros could never take the momentum out of the Twins' hands. They, they had it, then they let the Twins back in. It was just a good. It was a good baseball game by the Twins. The Astros didn't do enough. That's, that's my opinion. But Taylor Jones getting that home run, was huge. Chad McCormick getting the home run was huge. So, what did what did you think? What's what's your takeaways from the game? I mean, overall, I think that they're a little bit more focused. They are a little bit more um, – they're ready, more ready to play. You can tell that th that they were overall uh, had more focused. And it just – they I don't know. They just – after what uh, – when did they stop scoring? They had uh, – Chaz McCormick hit the home run in the fourth inning, and then the, the offense just kind of went sleep. I know they got that run in the tenth inning, but that was a uh, – let's call it a Rob Manfred special. Uh, when you had the runner at second base and then you just kind of advance them and score from there. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. You're going to have this uh, little stretch. The Astros have done this before. So um, we'll have to see. I just think that maybe um, they need a built bar or something. And uh, there's nine different flavors <laughs> you can have. And if you don't know about the built bar flavors, you're missing out. There's coconut, uh, coconut, almond, cherry, raspberry, mint, brownie, peanut butter brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel. So there's something for everybody. And you don't, if you don't know what your, uh, my favorite flavor is, I like the double chocolate. What's your favorite, Brett? My favorite flavor is the white chocolate birthday cake wrapped in hundred percent white chocolate. It's phenomenal. I would, I could use a built bar right now, walking back to my uh, $1 and 16 cent parking spot. 
All righty. So most of flavors have 17 grams of protein, only 130 calories, only four grams of sugar, and only four grams of net carbs. And other flavors have 18 grams of protein, just 180 calories, and uh, five grams of net carbs. Just nine amazing flavors, all uh, tasty and healthy. And uh, go to BuiltBar.com and use the promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 15% off your first order. Just use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. And I wonder uh, if uh, what uh, BetOnline.ag had, uh, if they had the Astros winning this game or not. But uh, BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on your all your sports action. Uh, baseball season is in full swing, and you can track all the action at BetOnline. Whether it's the Astros or if you like the Dodgers or if you like the Twins, get all the latest news and odds for and info for uh, for your sporting needs, including uh, MLB, NBA, NHL, uh, for uh, whatever you like to watch. Before the next pitch, head over to Bet Online on your laptop or mobile mobile device and check out all the great sporting news, sign up bonuses, and contest information. Don't sit on sidelines anymore, and uh, this is your chance to get in game as teams prep for the playoffs. Head to the website and use our mob- and use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome uh, bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts, and the promo code is a locked on. All right, uh, so let's go and talk about the big news before you get in your car and start driving off. Um, the big news from today was the fact that the Astros finally said, "Okay." Uh, Robel Garcia, it's not you, it's us. Well, actually, it's you. We need a break. And uh, so they decided that, um, that, that especially with Alex Bregman, not re- quite ready yet, and Yuli Gurriel still having the neck discomfort, they decided that they really just kind of needed a break. And so uh, they went ahead and optioned um, uh, Robel Garcia to AAA. And uh, they didn't DFA him. A lot of people want him to be DFA. And then uh, they go ahead and um, also uh, place uh, Yuli Guriel on the 10 IL. So Taylor Jones comes up and also um, uh, Justin Wilson. Wilson. Yes. No. Yeah. Or no, is it Jason Wilson? I, I can't remember this guy's name for some reason. <laughs> His last name's Wilson. Let's just go with that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why I can't. It's uh, Jacob Wilson. Jacob Wilson. So um, anyway, so uh, yeah. Oh, uh, Tommy Hudson uh, said that he's resigning as the president of the Robel um, fan club. So uh, he remember, can't. I, no, he can't. He can't take the office for one day and resign. <laughs> so he's he's got a he's got like a thirty day moratorium before he can. But if he does that, he's got to wait sixty days to become a president of any other fan club. Okay, so uh, Mr. Corona says it's time to become a. Uh, it's uh, time to join the Taylor Jones fan club. Yeah, I would agree with that. So Taylor Jones looks pretty good. Uh, he, I know he only got that one hit, but it, it was a big hit to get the Astros offense going um, in a what was it, in second inning. Yeah. Uh, so like, and then uh, McCormick uh, was a big part of the offense today. He got the uh, two hits, and uh, of course uh, he got the Astros going in that inning, and so. Uh, unfortunately, it just wasn't enough. Um, like, once again, Zach Greinke just doesn't have that put-away stuff. But what do y'all think about Robel Garcia? Um, I mean, are y'all happy that this is, that he's finally not there? Um, I mean, what's going on in your heads? I mean, y'all think this is just a temporary fix? Do you think that uh, this is just uh, for now? Do you think he'll be back? Um, but I think that once there's a need for a spot on the 48-man roster, I think that he'll probably be DFA'd because I, I just don't see that he is um, – there's not much need for him, especially once Bregman's back. And he just – I saw um, somebody put – I couldn't find it before the show, but I saw somebody put his WR plus uh, for all the other months, and he had a positive. Uh, but for the month of August, he was in the negative. And so it just – Oh, is this Robel? Yeah. So I just yeah, I, well here's the, well, here's the thing. Um, talking to a guy who is a minor league guy and has followed Taylor Jones from the day the Astros drafted him, he said the fact that we got him in the 19th round um, is a steal, kind of a reverse steal. Where he said he's surprised he didn't go go sooner. He said he's always been impressed with them. He's been impressed with the way he attacks the ball at the plate, 
and that he's got a lot of upside. And this is someone who's followed him from day one. And so um, I, I trust his analysis. I think Taylor Jones has the possibility of being a very good major leaguer. I don't know if that means an all-star, but I think he'll last in this league a long time. Of course, everybody will probably doubt that because he hasn't played much. But you also have a club, one through nine for the most part, that's been full. Um, you got Diaz out there. We got Yuli at first, but to be able to lean on him instead of Robel at first, I think is huge. Robel just wasn't getting it done. He he wasn't hitting. He wasn't fielding. Um, he could probably be better, but we don't have time for guys to be better. We don't have time for projects. And if Taylor Jones is going to hit a long ball here or there, um, that's going to help the team. The rest of the team's got to pick up the slack. You know, Altuve. Altuve has got to have better at bats. Um, Correa has got to have better at bats overall. Um, you know, it it was just one of those games, like I said earlier, where the Astros would get the momentum, then they would lose it. Um, they would get the momentum and they would lose it. And even though the Twins aren't a good team, they're still a major league team. And and you you can't ever forget that. Of course, I know the Astros don't go into these games against teams that are lesser than them thinking, oh, we're going to beat them. But at the same time, this is a very winnable game. This game was theirs to lose, and they lost it. And these are the games that in this month are so important because the more you lose games like this, the more you allow Oakland to chip away at your lead. And you don't want Oakland to creep up on your lead, um, even if they've got guys getting suspended for 80 games. Yeah. And, you know. So, perfect time to bring this up. So, Ramon Laureano, who kind of gave the Astros a hard time about the uh, cheating scandal, um, is actually um, suspended for 80 games for um, testing positive for, let me uh, quote this right. He, uh, he's got suspended 80 games for violating the MLB PED policy. He tested positive for Nandrolene. Um, so uh, that makes you wonder if the A's already knew that this was coming, and that's why they went out and got Charlie Marte. Well, you know, he played the 1990s steroid era guy. I don't know how it got in my system. No, you're a, you're a major league player you know darn well what's going into your system. You have trainers, and that is actually, if they have guys that are advising them in their physical training and their supplements and what they do, they've got people that are supposed to be checking those lists. And a lot of times, that may not be on the player. He may not have known, but in the end, you still should know what's going into your body. I mean, I don't know about you, but I know what I'm putting I know what medications I'm taking. I know what, I know even... Even things that have zero sugar, I know when they have sugar alcohols and that affects my system, all that stuff, right? Like, if I know that, there's no way that he can play dumb. I've never been in their shoes, but that's a huge suspension, 80 games. I mean, he's done for the season. He's not going to see the field, and he has been very good for them. He's a dependable outfielder. He's, he's a good too. hitter. Yeah, for the playoffs, too. So he, he gone. And so that that helps that helps the Astros. I mean, you hate to see a guy lose 80 games like that of his career, but you know there are consequences. And so, do we start calling Oakland cheaters and asking them to um, to basically um, give back their AL West title from last year because now it's fraudulent because they had a cheater on their team? I mean, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right, Eric? Yeah. So uh, uh, Dusty Baker said about uh, Yuli Gurriel, he said there's a 50-50 uh, chance he was going to maybe play today, and we couldn't afford to play short anymore. Plus, we had a couple off days, uh, so we, we, he wouldn't miss as many games. We hate to not have Yuli here, but we have to have him for the long haul. So there's a 50-50 chance he could have played today. So they decided to go ahead and do that. So that was just kind of weird situation. And uh, Jacob Wilson, I'll get his name right, but he was one at four six, um, one for seven in six career big games with the uh, A's, and uh, he played a whole bunch of minor league games. But uh, his slash line was two fifty nine, three thirty nine, four forty eight with one hundred fourteen home runs and forty seven RBIs and eight hundred two career minor league games. He did play in the the CBO the KBO as well with Brooks Raley, so that makes him an oh. uh, Insta star. Um, so, <laughs> can he pitch? 
Uh, I don't know, but uh, I think he's going to be wearing uh, number 13, if I uh, remember correctly. But he said that um, I was in a situation where I was out of a job and Houston called and they claimed me. And all I've heard about this organization is the good things uh, from other players. The The opportunity is uh, to come here and help this team win is a big one for me. I'm trying to take advantage of that opportunity, uh, every opportunity I get. In other words... <laughs> he wants to hear those bang in the trash can. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. To- well, well, I mean, you know, here's the thing though, Eric, I, I think the closer we get to the end of the season, the more important these games become. Um, no longer can we use the phrase, don't, don't score board watch. No longer can we use the phrase, Oh, well, you know, we'll go get the next series. They've got to salvage at least one game tomorrow from the twins. Okay. I mean, the twins are out of here Saturday, right? Or is it a four game series? Because I'm not looking at the schedule. No, it's a it's a four game series, I believe. Oh, it is it is a yeah, four game series. Remember it's a Hall of Fame weekend and they're giving away uh two sets of Hall of Fame uh, bobbleheads. So they're well, I, know. I one... just yeah, I just I just didn't know. I thought the aren't the aren't the rain aren't, aren't we playing the Rangers after this? I don't you know, know Brent. Sorry, I just I just don't have the schedule in front of me. Yeah, they're playing the Twins, and then uh, the uh, then they're off day. Then they're playing the Rockies. Okay, okay, the Rockies. I bring and and I believe that's only for two games, but they've yeah. got to they've got to win tomorrow and Sunday. They they can't they can't let this series get away. They've got to split um, because Oakland's playing Texas right now, and and we all know Texas is 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 bottom of the barrel baseball. So. Um, unless they can surprise us and, and that 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 Boheim kid or whatever his name is can get some walk off home runs against Oakland, which I would gladly be, you know, I would I would be a big fan of. So I guess cheer for the Rangers have a, this weekend. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a couple of quotes. Uh, Zach Grinke said, "Our bullpen's great. It's really deep with a lot of great options. I'm guessing once the playoffs comes, the starters will be going two times through the order, ideally, and the bullpen can handle the rest." That's the way it looks like to me. I like how that's set up. So okay. um, I don't I don't think he's looking at the extra innings, uh, but also have something about uh, Dusty Baker talking about Jose Altuve. Um, uh, Dusty Baker was on board with Jose Altuve's bun attempt. This is what he said. He hadn't been swinging it well. That was a heck of a play by Sano, who hadn't been at third base long. He made the play like he was playing third every day. I was okay with it big time. So yeah, okay I mean, honestly, honestly, my first reaction was, "Why are you bunting?" But they also said at the beginning of this, "Well, Jose Altuve hadn't been it's like swinging the bat well. He he was he was swinging at like down and down and away sliders that weren't even at his knees hardly when they started." And, you know, he, he has those games. He has those games where he just right. swings wild, or he doesn't have the best plate discipline. So um, with that being said, guys, I'm going to exit here because I'm about to get into some traffic and get on uh, yeah. I-45 South. So y'all have a good one. Thanks for hanging out with us, Eric. Thanks for uh, taking the helm. And like all All right. I'm uh, going to cut you off. All right. Uh, so I forgot to put this on earlier, but uh, the Astros are actually one in five in the last uh, six games and slashing uh, 223, 264, 428 with 24 runs scored. And they are five for 42 with um, runners in scoring, uh, scoring position. So uh, they are struggling recently. And that's uh, pretty obvious that uh, they're in a little uh, rut right now. But uh, you can't let that uh, kind of worry too much. And Casey, I did hear your comment earlier about my little uh, short. Uh, no, I wasn't upset about Robel Garcia um, leaving. I was upset about the fact Yuli went on the IL. So I said, unfortunately, uh, more about the uh, fact that um, that Yuli was going on the IL. So um, no, I was actually, when I say I'm a, I was a president of the uh, Robel Garcia fan club, I was talking more about, um, that was very sarcastic. So uh, hopefully the Astros uh, get the next two games. And I know um, uh, they've got to play better. They, it's got to be a better situation. The bullpen did pitch better. And the bullpen 
if they they don't have runners on second base to start the inning, I think that uh, th- they'll be fine. It just even in the the, the tenth and eleventh today, they would have done better if they didn't have runners on second base. But unfortunately, um, maybe Dusty needs to just kind of move Stanek and m- maybe move Stanek to the tenth uh, inning. And but uh, by the way, Stanek is pitching a lot better recently, guys. Um, so I think that he's figured out Ryan Presley look really good. Maybe the time off did him some good. So I'm, I'm really excited about this Astros bullpen, but uh, we need to hope that the starters figure things out. But uh, so I'm not too worried about this little losing streak. They, they will figure things out. It is a little scary, but uh, yeah, Graveman looks really good. Uh, Tommy says Graveman looks really good. And, um, and, and, like uh world traveler says oh wait i I thought i uh world traveler wait i'm trying to pull her up um world traveler says they usually struggle in august too that is something that's a good observation they do usually struggle in august and then they pulled around in september so good observation i uh, they did that in 2018 2019 from what i remember then they they uh, go on like uh donkey con in 20 um uh in uh september so uh, good job uh, at, um, to remember that. So, uh, Wheel Bite says, um, good job uh, with Taylor Jones coming up. He was swinging a hot bat. So, yeah, Taylor Jones, uh, he's going to get a lot of playing time until Alex Bregman. And by the way, uh, Dusty Baker said before the game, there's no timetable on when uh, Alex Bregman's going to be coming up. He did get a single today. He was one for three with the Sugarland Skeeter. So, uh, who knows when he's going to get some playing time. So, uh, anyway, so tomorrow's matchup, it's going to be Michael Pineda versus Luis Garcia. Uh, so this will be an interesting matchup. Uh, hopefully Luis Garcia has not hit that rookie wall. Hopefully this is the guy that can limit the, uh, twins dynamic offense. That's all of a sudden, uh, outscoring the Astros offense. Uh, cause this is not who they are. Um, They've been a team that's been struggling offensively, so we'll have to see. And the um, Pineda is a guy that uh, Carlos Cray has dominated. He has three career home runs off of him. He's batting 529 with five home runs. So look for Carlos Cray to have a big day. Jose Altuve is batting 316 uh, off of him. So And also Kyle Tucker has a home run off of him. So I look for those three guys to have a big day against Michael P- Pineda and um ghost rose and uh, uh i'm we're probably going to take saturday off and we'll be back on sunday with another episode of the lockdown astros podcast and rubel garcia um have fun with sugarland skeeters yuli guriel get better we need you back up here and uh until then jacob wilson welcome back welcome to the houston astros and uh, taylor jones keep doing what you do and uh, we'll talk to you on sunday go astros